Hello and welcome back to The Note. We have another day of relative calm today. Very unusually, the S&P 500 itself was exactly flat for the day to two decimal places. Not much to report there. In the bond market, you did see the 10-year Treasury yield get back above 2% for the first time in a month. The trend is rising. It is still, of course, remarkably low. As for crude, it's still too early to say that we are back into a new upswing. The uh, uh, WTI price has actually dropped back below $50. It's 10% down from its high of last week. Still not clear that we have found a level for crude. Why are we in a state of suspended animation in the stock markets? Largely because of the negotiations going on in Greece. It's a classical situation where there is a game of chicken going on between Germany and Greece. Neither particularly wants to blink first. The market assumes that one of them will blink and that we will end up with a compromise. But there is a small and very hard to quantify chance of a very ugly outcome to this, a Greek exit to the euro. That is hard to price. Plainly, therefore, people do not want to commit themselves too much while those talks go on. One piece of information, though, does give us all good reason for cheer. We had another very strong day for Apple today. As you probably know, it is now the first company ever to be worth more than $700 billion. It is worth almost exactly as much as the next two companies, ExxonMobil and Microsoft, combined. And the point I'd like to make is that, remarkably, this is all about the actual fundamentals of the company. This is how Apple's earnings per share have moved since the uh, uh, beginning of the rally back in 2009 compared to the earnings of Microsoft and the earnings of the S&P itself. You can see that uh, Apple has, Apple's earnings have risen in a truly phenomenal fashion, which more or less wholly justifies the rise in its share price. There has been a very slight expansion in its price earnings multiple since then, but its PE remains actually slightly cheaper than that of the S&P 500 itself. I spend much of my career pointing out examples of the market being irrational, of big moves that cannot be justified by the fundamentals. I have to admit that in the case of Apple, this would appear to be one big move that really is justified, driven even, by the fundamentals.